Hi! Today I'll show you how to use the InSwan document camera with the bundled Documate software. When you first open the application, you'll see all the main function buttons. You can click the icon button to hide or show the toolbox. Let's demonstrate using this model car. So, in the upper left corner, you see these five operating modes. The first one is Live Mode, which we're using now. Next is Playback Mode, followed by Drawing Mode, Scan Mode, and Batch Scan Mode. I'll demonstrate all of these in turn. Let's start with Live Mode, which you'll probably be using the most frequently. Live Mode captures whatever is directly under the camera. There are three buttons on the bottom. The first is autofocus. If your image is a little blurry, just click this and it will focus the camera. Next is zoom out and zoom in, which are pretty self-explanatory. Next, on the right-hand side, you see some drawing tools. The first one looks like a pencil. This is freehand and allows you to draw whatever you want on the screen. The next one is Eraser, which you can use to erase any part of what you've already drawn. Under that is the Line tool. When you click this, your mouse tracker turns into a plus sign. Click to start drawing a line and drag your mouse. Release the mouse button to complete the line. The two dots at the ends show that you can edit the line's color and opacity. If you move the mouse over the red dot, the cursor changes to a finger, allowing you to change the line's length and direction. Place the cursor over the center of the line and it turns into a hand, which you can use to pick up and reposition the line. The arrow tool lets you draw arrows. Identical to the line tool, you can change the arrow's color, opacity, and direction. Below that is the Rectangle tool. Use this to draw a rectangle. You can use the Ink button to change the color of the border. Drag your mouse to change the border thickness. Click the Fill button to change the rectangle's fill color and opacity. The Circle drawing tool works the same way. Beneath that is the Text tool. Click this to add text to the screen. You can add the text and drag it by holding the left mouse button. To change the text box size, move your mouse over the red dot, left click on the finger and drag to resize. To move the text box, move your mouse over the yellow line, left click the hand icon and drag to reposition. When you've selected the text box, you can also change the font and type size by clicking the font button, and you can change the text color by clicking the ink button. To reposition your annotations, click here to select the area you want to move. Then click the scissors icon to cut the section, and left click and drag to move it to the desired location. To duplicate your annotation, Click the Selection button, select the desired area, and then click the Duplicate button. This copies the selected annotation. Then hold the left mouse button to drag the copy. Now let's look at the buttons on the left-hand side. Let's say you've made some annotations, but you made a mistake. Click here to undo. Or click here to redo it. Next, if you want to cancel all the annotations you've made, click this button to erase them all. Now let's talk about the annotation import and export functions. You can click this button to export your annotations for future use. Later, you can import your exported annotations using this button. To reposition the imported annotations, 
Click and hold the left mouse button and drag the annotations to where you want them. The Image Control button lets you adjust your live image. Drag this indicator left and right to adjust the image brightness. Move it back to the center to restore the default setting. You can also adjust the brightness manually using the physical button on the camera head. For more detail, see the owner's manual or videos. You can also drag your mouse left and right to rotate the live image. Below, these two buttons allow you to flip the image horizontally and vertically. Checking this checkbox will make the image full screen. Use the WB function to adjust the white balance of your live image, or click the Auto button to restore the default setting. Next to this is the Freeze button, allowing you to freeze the current image. The Interval Timer Shooting button allows you to capture still images at defined intervals. Set the interval timer here, along with how many images to capture. The Settings functions are divided into four areas. First are device settings. When you connect your InSwan document camera to your computer, your default device will be displayed as a document camera. Next is format, also called resolution. You can freely adjust the resolution. Higher resolutions will produce a crisper image quality, but the files will take up more space and may cause latency issues with less powerful computers. Experiment with the resolution settings to find the setting that's right for you. Third is audio. You can use the microphone in the document camera or your computer's native microphone. Finally, click this to define your save location. By default, files will be saved in the Documents folder in the Document subfolder. You can specify a different folder, but please make sure that the folder path is read-writable or your files may not be saved. If you have any questions or need technical support, please email us at service at inswan.com. The default interface language of your document software will match your operating system language. You can change the interface language by clicking here and restarting the application. Now that we've updated your settings, let's click the Start Preview button to confirm your settings and go into Preview mode. This is the Snapshot button. Clicking this will capture a snapshot of the live image, including your on-screen annotations. You can save these image captions for future use. You can also record your lectures or presentations by clicking the Record button. For Windows users, the recording will also capture all of your annotations. Annotation capture isn't available for MacBook or Chromebook users because of overloading. When you finish your presentation, Click the Record button again to stop recording. Let's say you want to preview a previously captured image. Go to Playback Mode by clicking this icon in the lower left corner. Find and select the image or video you want to preview. To preview a still image, select the image and click the Open button. In this state, you can add further annotations. To play back a video, select the desired video and click the Open button. In this state, you can add further annotations. You can pause and restart the video at any time point. Drag this up and down to adjust the video playback volume. You can use Snapshot, Record, and Playback to save your lectures and presentations for future use and allow your students to review your lectures on their own time. Use Drawing Mode to add visual annotations or make notes. You can draw lines and arrows in different colors. 
you can also create rectangles and circles of different sizes, shapes, and fill colors. Use the text tool to add text notes. For more detail, see the annotation section. At the bottom, select whiteboard and blackboard. Here, the board ratio is set by default to 16 by 9 but you can change this to 4x3, 9x16, and 3x4. You can also use the freehand tool to draw anything you want. Scan mode lets you scan live images and documents. Click this button and drag these four points to adjust the scan area. Click this button to toggle the scan area to full screen or back to the previous scan area. In scan mode, click load image file to import images in the JPEG, BMP, and PNG file formats. Higher resolution settings produce better scan results. Now I'll show you how to scan a document. First, place the document under the camera. Select the desired scan area and click the Scan button. Click the Confirm button to save the scanned image. Prior to saving, you can also annotate or rotate the image. Documate provides some useful image effects to fine-tune your scanned image. Normal shows accurate color tones. Photo selects ideal color tones for photographs. Document selects ideal color tones for documents. Mono produces a black and white image. Invert inverts the document colors. Custom allows you to adjust the brightness contrast, saturation, radius, and intensity of your image or document. You can also click this button to inverse the image or document. Now I'll demonstrate how to scan a document for best results. First, click on the document image effect and click the custom button to slightly adjust the color tone. Now, click the Confirm button to save and preview. Now let's review how to set the save document location and file format. You can save your file as PDF, JPEG, TIFF, or PNG. You can also select the paper size and orientation, and also adjust the aspect ratio. Click the Save button to save the scanned file. Your saved file will stay in this location for future use. Now let's review the fast and simple OCR function. Let's say you want to extract the text of this document. First, select the scan area and click to capture the image. Then click OCR and select the primary and secondary languages to ensure optimal text extraction. Click the Run button to extract the text. The extracted plain text can be revised in any text editor or word processor. OCR works best on ordinary text. If your document includes images or complicated layout, you'll get best results by scanning discrete sections one at a time. Batch scan mode allows you to scan images and documents continuously saving a lot of button clicks. 
Start with the first document to scan. Select the desired file format, PDF or JPEG. Click this button to toggle between PDF and JPEG file formats. You'll see the active file format in the upper right corner. Click this button to freely adjust the scan area. You can click this button to toggle between the full screen and the previously selected scan area. Click the Scan button to start batch scan. Let's say you're scanning to PDF. You'll see the page count on the upper right corner. When you finish all the scans you need, just click the Export to PDF button. Documate will collate all of the scans into a single PDF file and export it to the default folder or another folder you choose. You can also batch save each page as a separate scan. For this function, we recommend you save to JPEG. Follow the previously described process. Select the scan area and click the scan button. In the upper right corner, you'll see the export JPEG file information for each scan. This concludes our introduction to the InSwan document camera. We hope you found it useful. If you have any further questions, please contact us at service at inswan.com. We hope you're very satisfied with your InSwan document camera and will recommend it to your friends and colleagues.